you know, we can look at that, you know, in terms of what we see at Boom, even with the composting toilets, you know, or the or the permaculture projects. You know, I mean, how many people here don't know what permaculture is at this point? You know, it's a design science. Permaculture is applying a design science to food growing, so that so that you don't exhaust the soil. You know, so that you work with what the, what the land can provide, and you do it through uh, observation of the land. You know, so that that type of model uh, of a design science um, analysis can be applied in, in many different uh, areas. Um, you know, from our social systems to our financial systems uh, to our models of love and community. Um, yeah, I mean, a, a particularly important issue around that is the uh, financial structure, you know. I mean, am, among the things that, that characterize our world right now, we have obviously, um, you know, as I mentioned, the, the climate acceleration, uh, climate change accelerating, and then we also have what seems to be a global financial meltdown, you know, ongoing. And, you know, when I wrote uh, 2012, when it came out in 2006, I'd actually predicted 2008 as a, as a financial collapse I made a lot of other mistakes, but that one I happened to get right. But, but, but in a way, it seems like the financial system, in, in a sense, died in 2008. I don't really know how else to explain this. At the moment, it's almost like a patient being uh, you know, pumped up with artificial uh, shots of adrenaline from outside in the form of uh, credit you know, that, that has to come from somewhere. So you know, more and more is coming from the central banks. Um, um, yeah, so, 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 you know, so I, and I think at the same time, you know, as we can look at this global financial system, it's almost like a plane that looked like it was flying, you know, and suddenly the engine died in midair, but it still has enough momentum to keep going, you know, for a while, um, which is what's happening now. And, and so we have to look at, you know, the global financial system, and we have to think about capitalism in itself, right? Like, you know, most people still are convinced that capitalism is the way, and, and that it's going to be with us, you know, forever and so on. You know, my, my perspective is that we're going to look at capitalism as a transitional system, as an aspect of our evolutionary process, that, uh, you know, what capitalism did is it globalized the uh, world into one market, uh, and uh, it created a communications infrastructure, like a planetary uh, nervous system and, 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 and uh, you know, kind of neural system, you know, so we could then take this next uh, leap together. So, so the global financial system, I mean, basically, you know, this whole idea, and, you know, this is what's so extraordinary about being human, I think, is it's like, you know, we let our beliefs, our ideas take us over, and we forget that the, there are creations, you know, so, so money as, a, as an instrument is very much a human creation, you know, we, we constructed a form of money that at the moment is not linked to any tangible resources or assets, uh, it, it, it gains interest, and, and it's designed in such a way that it creates artificial scarcity and competition. Um, you know, the, the possibility is, is totally available that you could construct different ways that people can exchange value that have different ways of being and values attached to them. Um, we talked about that in my film. We interviewed a guy called uh, Bernard Lyotar, who was one of the architects of the Euro, who, th who then wrote a book called the, the Future of Money, where he looked at um, kind of all these different options and currencies, and he noted that there doesn't have to be just an, one monopolized currency that, that bears interest and kind of puts people into this kind of debt slavery or peonage. I mean, it, to me, it's like, you know, there's the whole question of whether the system is um, intentionally constructed to be diabolic or whether it's just something that's happened out of its own momentum. And that's a very deep philosophical question that we could really go, we could delve into, you know, to a great degree. But, you know, look at something like, you know, in the U.S., like student debt. You know, to go to college, people put themselves, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt. So there's no way they can detach from the system. They're, they're totally implicated. They're drawn in. They're forced to be almost like serfs, you know, of the system to pay off this debt, you know. Um, so, yeah, so, so Leotard recognized that rather than just having one monocurrency, what would make more sense and what would be more natural would be to have a... Um, a set of different tools or instruments for exchanging value that supported different value structures and, and, and even supported positively community, supported biodiversity, uh, and so on. Um, you know, so one of these he proposed would be a, um, a global trading currency that would actually have a negative interest. 
which means that it would lose money rapidly, it lose value rapidly. So it would be based on tangible goods and products, you know, such as foodstuffs, perishables, and other unperishable stuff that, that naturally degrades in value over time, as, as most things do, right? If you, have a, you buy a new cup, and then a couple of years later, it's, it's not, not worth as much. It's only our money that, that is supposed to gain, you know, value in perpetuity, you know? So what, what you would do is if you had a globally uh, traded uh, negative interest currency, you know, when people manage to get a, a resource, you know, a, 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 you know, grab, get some of that resource, they would have no incentive to hoard it. And instead their incentive would be to share it with their community. So that's just one example. He, he, he actually puts forth a range of examples. And Charles Eisenstein, who's my friend who's speaking tomorrow, also goes into this in great depth. And actually, uh, my company, uh, Evolver, published a really wonderful book of Charles's called Sacred Economics, which is available free on the internet, and you can also buy copies if you want. Uh, but, but essentially, he, he, let, he, he lays out a lot of what I'm just talking about and going deep into this economic model and this, this, you know, this obvious need we have at this point for an alternative uh, set of, of ways for people to exchange value. You know, and once again, we don't have to look at this as, you know, I, one thing about the Occupy movement you know, and I think that just the, the sudden development and, and fluorescence and then kind of dissolution of that movement is, is such an amazing phenomenon. But, um, you know, one, you know, thing that was totally like it had to be what it was, but even the word occupy, you know, is such a relationship to uh, colonialism, you know, to like the occupation of native lands and so on. It has in its own language this kind of aggressive, like, you know, you're going to occupy something or whatever, you know. Um, in, in a way, it, it's not surprising that it then led to such a backlash or a negative reaction. You know, it could be that a different movement would come up with a different theme, you know, such as unify, you know, and, and rather than, you know, seeking to, to, you know, create divisions of 99% and 1%, you know, really begin with this, with this basis of understanding that we're just one human family at this point. It's really hard for me to read my handwriting in the dark, so. <coughs> so yeah, so, so, so those are some of my main uh, theories about how we can bring about this, 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 I believe, this thing that wants to happen, which is this uh, benevolent and positive transition into a uh, uh, new planetary uh, society, you know, a new planetary community. Uh, I think that, you know, what we see here, it seems very small when you go to festivals like Boom and, and Burning Man, but there's this whole idea of a kind of a tipping point phenomenon, or what the scientist Rupert Sheldrake talks about as a morphogenic field effect, which basically means that as people resonate, gain access, understand a new paradigm of information, a new way of being and, and knowing, and they're able to articulate to themselves and other people you know, that, that becomes more and more something that becomes easily accessible for more and more people. So it goes from, you know, thousands to millions, you know, to potentially beyond that, you know, in, in a short period of time. And, and, and we see that the uh, internet really could provide the uh, nervous system, you know, for such a systemic uh, transition. You know, you could have all these alternatives for how, you know, currency is exchanged, you know, for how uh, decision making could be done collaboratively and directly, you know, with an utter transparency, you know, rather than, than you needing, you know, governments to be hiding all this information, you know, we, we, we could all be, you know, self-educated on what actually is the meaning of this, you know, climate change, what is it going to do to our local communities, and how do we prepare? So, so you know, so as I said, you know, have, having kind of recognized this, this, the, the, the need for the shift, I then began to try to put my ideas into practice. And it's, it's been sort of interesting, you know, for me personally, because I, and essentially I'm a writer, you know, kind of like um, introvert, extrovert, hermit, you know, and, but I recognize the need for there to be kind of like a forum or, 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 a, or a collaborative network, you know, for these ideas to, to propagate and, and for um, self-organization to happen in a way. So I started uh, uh, with, with a number of people, a company and a nonprofit called Evolver. Uh, we have Evolver.net and uh, the uh, EvolverNetwork.org is the nonprofit side of it.